Hello everybody, it's The Last Grader. We are back with another video and today we're over and bounding into comics, <clears throat> combining two subjects that I usually talk about on here, which is comic books and video games. Because Square Enix has had a major loss in revenue right now. <laughs> and, uh, hmm, this, the curse of um, Marvel act, comic book activism, I'll say that, the curse of comic book activism and cultural colonialism has finally uh, has had a debilitating effect on all the success that Square Enix has had with Final Fantasy. Uh, you see here from the title, it results in a $48 million loss, which is nothing to joke at, even for a company like Square Enix. But let's keep going, okay? Square Enix has reported their, recent, their recently released Marvel's Avengers title underperformed significantly, resulting in a $48 million loss. From the Japanese video game holding company. Now they're saying this. I'm betting this is in American dollars, and that's going to be massive on uh, in the Japanese market <clears throat> in their currency. Anyway, in a recently released financial report, Square Enix re revealed that the company lost approximately five billion Japanese yen between the first and second quarters of the current fiscal year. Like I said, in the Japanese market, it is, that's damn near, a couple million in the Japanese market is damn near devastating. Um, you get to tens of millions of dollars, it's up in there in the billions at some point in their dollar. So, I mean, or their currency. Really, really bad. Really bad. While the company's first quarter profits were boosted by the release of the highly anticipated and well-received Final Fantasy VII Remake, the six-month period between April and November that encapsulates their first, their, oh, I'm sorry, their second quarter saw the release of only a single significant title, the Crystal Dynamics developed Marvel's Avengers. Now, here, here's why, and I'm going to probably talk about this now. There's a big difference between Final Fantasy VII and Marvel at this point. Final Fantasy VII has been this very rare... It's almost like the, the difference is between a junkie who's always getting their hit versus a junkie that's being specifically starved and then given a massive hit. Okay? Uh, one's going to be craving the drug more than the other one is. All right? Uh, also, the thing with Square Enix was, with Final Fantasy VII, they were really, really intent and constantly trying to reassure players that they were going to get a better experience that still had the same feel. Basically, they were going to give them Final Fantasy VII more abundantly, and they did. The only real gripes about Final Fantasy VII that I have seen were Tifa's boob size and the lack of panty shots. And that is kind... And that's been everything. The gameplay has been rock solid. The story has been rock solid. Uh, a lot of characters before that you had feelings for, you have even more feelings for them now. Um, there were just lots of things done in that game that were done more efficiently and more impressed. And the game was difficult and the game was a challenge. Take Marvel's Avengers, for instance, and about the only thing pushing Marvel right now and keeping it afloat are the movies. And they have winded down their biggest blockbusters, and there's, I think it's what they're calling it, Phase 4 Marvel movies. You're going to see the introduction of the new Avengers, the woke Avengers, the woke Marvel that's coming out. Um, you've already seen part of it. Miles Morales is the first part, which Miles Morales is a decent character. The problem is, when you introduce a somewhat woke character in Miles Morales, you get this belief by the people in Marvel that, oh, we'll release all these woke characters. They did this with um, Captain Marvel, and it was not the major success that people thought it was going to be. Uh, it was more of a... It was more like the Daredevil with uh, Ben Affleck in terms of result. I mean, it made money, but it wasn't, oh my God, it's such a great movie. It, uh, the actress was a, a bitch most of the time, and... Like I've said before, Marvel has got to get... Mar Marvel's like a prostitute that doesn't understand sex sells. Okay? 
they have tits and ass, but they will not, but they want to cover it all up because they want to be respected. Um, you're writing comic books, you're writing comic books about women that are, you know, ideal people with I, with the, the best morals. And sometimes, they, and sometimes they don't have the best morals, but you, you can play around with that a bit. The problem though is when you've got a company that is supposed to be, you know, bringing out hot, sexy superheroes that guys are wanting, you know, big, massively muscular guys and, you know, sexy, athletic women, and you stop doing that and you start covering them up to the point where it's almost, I mean, the, the next step is a burqa, you are really starting to, you, you start watering down your fan base to an extent. And, and then you start pushing pointless politics and everything else. The problem I can tell you right now with Marvel's Avengers and a lot of people disagree with me on this, is the fact that they use Kamala Khan as the main character. And I'm not saying this because I'm saying, I'm not saying, oh, they shouldn't have used a, a woman of color. No, you could use a woman of color. The problem is they used a woman of color that nobody knows about, practically. Okay? Only if you are buying the comic books do you know of Kamala Khan. It is Marvel's Avengers. Okay? You would have done much better if you had put Tatala... Chikala, I can't say his name for nothing... Put Black Panther's sister in there, and you would have had a much better chance at this, okay? Because the Black Panther movie actually did make some good money, and people actually do like that character. You could have pulled Valkyrie from Thor and Thunder, have her come from Asgard, you know, and and you know, you'd still have the same thing. You've still got a black woman. You still got a woman of color on there, but they pulled out Kamala Khan, who right now does not have an actress, which they are probably gonna. Got helicopters flying overhead. They're looking for marijuana fields. <laughs> anyway, but now that's random. I know, but you have Kamala Khan, who, if you don't read the books, you don't know who she is. She's not in any of the movies right now. Uh, she's going to probably get a movie at some point. But then, you, but you have her, and then on top of that, that's also further compounded by the fact of Black Widow was probably the best her and Thor were probably the best looking of the Avengers the best looking character that I saw was Taskmaster from the beta I mean he looked fan he looked freaking fantastic and deadly as hell uh, we didn't draw I mean Captain America comes in there and he looks like a dude in a tactical vest and he doesn't look like he's about to I mean you 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 look just think Henry Cavill in the Witcher where he's about to break the leather and you have an understanding of what Captain America should have looked like in the game. Okay? And then on top of that, I think there were some bugs and some other things, but we'll figure that out. Like I said, the main problem here is one side went with familiarity and fan service to an extent, and they did tone down some of the the fan fan service, like, you know, the, the sexy fan service. The other side went with a comp with a practically unknown character outside of the comic books for everyone to relate to and play as. And that... That just becomes annoying when you have to play as someone you don't like. Personally, I'm, and I'm going to get some flack for this, I don't like Aerith in Final Fantasy. I've never liked her. In my opinion, Cloud should reject the flat-chested ch chick who's, uh, I mean, spoiler alert, she's going to die in the end anyway. Um, she, she ends up getting shafted by a shut for off. Uh, he should go with the big titty chick that comes to a fight barehanded and still can win. Okay? <laughs> That's... That, in my opinion, Tifa is a much is a much better match for Cloud. But um, you go with the they go with like they went with as much fan service as they could get. Whereas Marvel goes in there with an unknown character, and when you're playing as a as a character that you don't know about or you technically don't like, and also the way they do Miss Marvel's pow, uh, Camilla Khan's power set, it's always to make her look as ugly and unattractive as possible. And this does not appeal to people. Part of the things about powerful people is that they have the prestige. They look amazing. Okay? Uh, you can have a hobo out there in the middle of nowhere. Usually you have people that are ugly, have amazing power, simply to subvert the, ed the expectation of the audience. If you want to see a good subversion of that, look at the beginning cutscene of, um, what was it, the first boss fight of God of War where Kratos runs into, what's-his-face, Hellrun, I think is his name, 
and he, he grabs the guy, bends his arm back, and you're just like, oh, damn, Kratos. Kratos doesn't kill the giant. He's going to whoop this dude, and the guy throws him through Kratos' log cabin. Log cabin, mind you. And then you're like, oh, oh, this is what we're dealing with. Yeah, that's how you subvert expectations. Usually that's what a character like that is used for. Uh, in this instance, ugh, we don't even have a Camilla Khan's outfit. I've never really liked it. And I'm, I'm just bashing the character right now because, as I said, this is one of the major problems. You're playing as a character like that. If it had been, okay, we're th we've thawed out Captain America the first couple of days of him being thawed out and working with the Avengers, or even have, you know, Spider-Man come in there and be part of the Avengers, or have Wolverine be a part of the Avengers, or have uh, Kitty Pride be a part of the Avengers. I mean, frick, have Kitty Pride be a part of the Avengers. That's a character that is widely loved by the um, X-Men fan base. They love Kitty Pride to an extent. Um, I like Kitty Pride. You could throw that in there and have her, you know, you know, try something out with the Avengers. You know, as kind of a student program with the X, with the Professor X's X facility or something. You know, you you know you you learn to to manage your mutant powers. Uh, you know, maybe you could go save the world with the Avengers a little bit. Now, you know, they'll take you under their wing and work with you. But anyway, continuing on <laughs> here. Okay, that's apparently some kind of graph I haven't really had a chance to look at, though. But through Square, though Square Enix has chosen not to release hard sale numbers for their Marvel-themed games as a service offering, I sense another... I'm going to have to go by Walmart and see how many copies are left in the shelves. That that's gonna be good. <laughs> we may have to do another video of that. Anyway, Dave Gibson, the chief investment advisor and founder of the Astaris Advisory, a Japanese-based marketing market analyst firm, crunched the numbers and stated that the report implied Marvel's Avengers only sold three million or so, and caused closer to one. 170 million to 190 million to produce. Wow. So basically, this was not a small game. You, they really throwed some money at this because it was, and I'm probably this was a guaranteed to win. It's probably like Last of Us Part Two. This is this is going to be probably not as bad, but it'll probably be a really close second. Man, 2020 is still young. We're not even out of 20. It's like two months away, man. Two months away. You, you And already somebody is looking at Last of Us Part Two and saying, hold my beer. <laughs> Why someone didn't stop, didn't say stop, post the multiplayer beta remain a, will remain a mystery, Gib, said Gibson, before noting that Square are adamant they can make a recovery. And they probably can. All right? Uh, it is a multiplayer game. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to count it out. I'm just going to say when you launch the game, you launched it with an un, with a character that's one very unknown, and two current iteration in the comics. All, another thing, also the current iteration of Miss Marvel in the comics, she really is. It, it's she's not written very well. All right, they need to get a much better writer on that character because, and the reason you have Miss Marvel in the first place is when she was first written, she's like America Chavez. When they were first written by someone who actually knew what they were doing and actually knew how to write, all oh, the characters were great. People did actually like them. Then they put some wokey activists on them and messed the characters completely up. I'm not joking. Uh, America Chavez is, comes is now apparently they put a lesbian chick on there, and she pretty much wrote. Cra I, I'm not kidding. There's actually a line in there. Holy administration, what are you doing here? It's like. Why do people have to be so cringy? Nobody enjoys that. And so it, it drives people away from the books. Which apparently is also translating into the games. As noted by industry commentator at Doom's, uh, Dom's Playing, the loss in Marvel's Avengers was so severe that despite reporting how both HD game, games segment records higher, recorded higher sales and Square Enix overall operating income had nearly doubled, mostly thanks to subscriber activity within the Final Fantasy VII and Dragon Quest X MMOs, 
the company ultimately returned to an operating loss on lower than expected results for Marvel Avengers not being able to offset higher costs. In other words, the Marvel game just completely canceled out everything that they got from Final Fantasy VII and Dragon Quest X. So, damn. Marvel is doesn't just have... Mar, I mean, Marvel's kind of done with Marvel fans. You know, the fandom has kind of moved on to other things or moving on to independent books. But you may have pissed off the Final Fantasy weebos over there if the next game sucks. Damn. People are sharpening their buster swords and their masamones right now. <laughs> it's going, oh, God. Marvel's going to get some shit. Given this significant financial windfall, it will be interesting to see if Square Enix remains committed to their fulfilling the entirety of their promised post-game DLC. Um, no, I don't think they will. I think what will happen is they're going to put, they're going to sit back, look at Marvel, and say, um, we tried, we made a major loss. This completely negated everything that we achieved they'll probably fulfill their contracts and then they will drop this game and it'll go down the memory hole and then square enix is going to push everything they've got into getting the next final fantasy 7 2 out and get it to where it will it will be in good state it's good standing because they're going to want to get that money back um yeah that's uh, th this game, in my opinion, is probably going to be dead before it's over with. On top of the loss for Square Enix, Steam Charts reports the PC version of the game has had an average of, wow, 1,103 players. That's amazing. Playing over the last 30 days. In September, the game had 7,463 average players. That's well over half. Well over uh, a quarter no, three quarters of their base completely gone by October. That's in like that's less that that's no well, yeah that's about a month. Wow, that's a major drop off, dude. But I mean, what what can you say? All right, I've said this before. Marvel's the actions Marvel has taken is going to have major implications across the board. Okay, um, this is what comes of going after your fan base. This is what comes of pursuing an obscure group, obscure minority of crazy people who only care about politics. But this is what happens when you call most of your fan base Nazis. This is what happens when you belittle people for pointing out obvious canon screw-ups. The problem with Marvel has apparently spread over into Star Wars, and it's it's this this whole cultural colonialization colonial, cultural colonialization colonialization. I've been talking way too much. I need to take a break and take a drink here in a minute. But the whole problem with this cultural colonialization is now that Marvel has been doing it, a lot of those idiots have moved over into Hollywood now, and they are starting. They've been causing problems over there. Now you do not have... Hollywood's no longer the big juggernaut anymore. I would almost say Bollywood's doing a much better job of making movies than Hollywood because they're actually making movies people would like to watch. As crazy and stupid as those movies are at times, they are more fun to watch than a lot of the crap coming out of Hollywood. I mean, you've got Woke Terminator. We're going to have... They've been screwing up Star Wars. They've screwed up Star Trek. Uh, the NFL has, uh, you look anywhere woke culture has gone, it is literally get woke, go broke. It is, we have enough evidence to prove it as a law of economics. Okay? If you hardline push, um, and it's it's not even, honestly, get woke, go broke wouldn't even, cons wouldn't even apply to just social justice stuff or even leftist ideology. If you were to do this on a conservative level, the same things that they were doing with, um, with politics in media, you would probably have the same backlash, in my opinion. You would still have the same going broke moment. That would happen. If the NFL come out there and started talking about how bad China and Russia were, and that America was always the best and everything else, I think they would not suffer as badly because of American patriotism, but it still would result in a net loss before it would be over with. 
because you get to a point of just cringiness. When you when you want to be patriotic, you know, just fly the jets over, congratulate our military members, tell them that they're good people, and then go on. Don't sit there and start complaining that every other country is the freaking devil or these people I don't agree with are the freaking devil and we should put them in gulags because that's what these idiots do all the time. But anyway, uh, tell me which thing in the comments. I know this was a longer video because I was doing this. Uh, if this is more of a spur of the moment video that I, I was doing, so it was just, it's going to last long regardless. But anyway, uh, tell me which thing in the videos do you guys, in the comments, do you think that Square Enix is going to continue with the Marvel's Avengers, or are they going to cut their losses and stick with the Final Fantasy game that they know is going to make it? And if this does end up hurting Square Enix enough that their Final Fantasy game suffers, do you think Marvel's going to get Omni-Slashed before it's over with? Anyway, um, tell me what you think in the comments. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell for notification. Helps me out. Lets people know this channel exists. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.